Project Mercury Familiarization Manual. Table of Contents. Section 1. Introduction. Section 2. Major Structural Assemblies. Section 3. Environmental Control System. Section 4. Stabilization Control System. Section 5. Sequence System. Launch through retrograde or abort. Section 5. Sequence System. Launch through retrograde or abort. Section 6. Escape and Jettison Rocket Systems. Section 7. Postgrade Rocket System. Section 8. Retrograde Rocket System. Section 9. Sequence System Landing Through Recovery. Section 10. Electrical Power and Interior Lighting Systems. Section 11. Communication System. Section 12. Navigational Aids. Section 13. Instrumentation System. Forward. The purpose of this document is to present a clear, operational description of the various capsule systems and major components. Two types of usage are visualized. The first is as an orientation indoctrination type document. The second as a reference document containing relatively detailed information on all systems and components. Separate information is provided for each capsule test configuration, but not all information will be repeated for each capsule where it is the same as other capsules. The book is divided primarily by capsule systems. The first part of each major section is devoted to description and operation of the specification compliance capsule system. This reflects, generally, capsules 18, 19, and 20, which are considered as representative since they are manned orbital capsules. Immediately following the spec system coverage is the number 2 capsule system coverage, then the number 3, etc. The number two capsule system is covered on a like specification compliance capsule except as follows basis. The number three and succeeding capsule systems may similarly be compared to either the spec capsule system or to any other prior capsule system depending upon which reference causes the least duplication. In no case, however, will the reader be required to refer to more than two prior capsule systems, including the spec system. Since all capsule test configurations will not be finalized as of this printing, only the earlier capsules are covered. Remaining capsule coverage will appear in subsequent revisions to this document. Section 1. Introduction. Table of Contents. Mission Description, Capsule Description, Booster Description, Capsule Recovery, Crew, Test Configuration Number 2 Capsule, Test Configuration Number 3 Capsule, Test Configuration Number 4 Capsule. 1. Introduction to Project Mercury. 1-1. One, one. Mission Description. The possibility of man venturing into space has shifted quite recently from the fantasy of science fiction to the realm of actuality. Scientific progress has slowly... One, introduction to Project Mercury. One, one, mission description. The possibility of man venturing into space has shifted quite recently from the fantasy of science fiction to the realm of actuality. Scientific progress has slowly but surely loosened man's ties to the earth, and recent technological advances have promised to release him completely. Today, spaceflight is considered well within the range of man's capabilities. 1. 2. Initiated by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, a spaceflight program is now underway. Through the research, design, and production facilities of McDonnell Aircraft Corporation and their many subcontractors, an American will shortly make a flight into space. 
the program that will put him there? Project Mercury. 1-3. Fundamentally, the mission of Project Mercury is the projection of a manned capsule into the semi-permanent orbit about the Earth, the study of man's capabilities in spaceflight, and the subsequent safe return of the capsule and its occupant to the Earth's surface. It is immediately obvious that the mission, while simply stated, is of tremendous scope and magnitude, and requires exceptional coordination of manpower and facilities. The data contained in this and succeeding sections will provide detailed information on the equipment and procedures utilized to accomplish that mission. 1-4. Capsule Description 1-5. General See figures 1-1, one, 1-2, one, 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 and 1-4. One, the Project Mercury capsule is basically a conical structure containing a pressurized area suitable for human occupation during launch, orbit, and recovery phases of the mission. The base of the cone contains provisions for attachment to the Redstone or Atlas booster through the use of special adapters. Through the use of special adapters. The apex of the cone contains the devices for recovering the capsule at the conclusion of a mission, and equipment which would allow the pilot to escape in the event of an emergency during the launch phase. Provided in the capsule are systems which regulate environment, flight attitude, data recording and telemetry, and capsule recovery. 1-6. When in place on the nose on the booster, the small end of the capsule is up. The astronaut is on his back in a sitting position. During launch and acceleration phase, the astronaut faces forward with respect to capsule flight path. When the booster capsule combination reaches a specific altitude, attitude, and velocity, they separate. The booster slows and returns to the Earth's atmosphere where it is destroyed. The capsule is stabilized momentarily, then rotated 180 degrees about its yaw axis. Throughout the remainder of the flight, whether orbital or ballistic, the astronaut faces aft with respect to capsule flight path. 1-7. Cabin. 1-8. Arrangement. The equipment within the capsule cabin interior, figure 1-5, is arranged so that all operating controls and emergency provisions are accessible to the astronaut when in the normal, restrained position. Cabin equipment basically consists of an astronaut's support couch, a restraint system, instrument and display panels, navigational aids, flight and abort control handles, food and water supply, waste container, survival kit, cameras, and electronic equipment required to operate the communication system. 1-9. Support Couch The astronaut support couch, see figure 1-6, is designed to transmit astronaut body loads and protect the astronaut from loss of consciousness. During capsule peak accelerations in the capsule launch, re-entry, and landing phases, the support couch is centrally located adjacent to the large pressure bulkhead. The couch is constructed of a crushable honeycomb material, bonded to a fiberglass shell, and lined with a protective rubber padding. The support couch is molded to the contour of a specific astronaut's body to provide maximum body support during capsule flight. The couch is fabricated in sections to enable couch installation through the capsule entrance hatch. 110. Restraint System The astronaut's restraint system, see figure 17, is designed to firmly restrain the astronaut in the support couch during capsule maximum deceleration. The restraint system consists of helmet restraint guard, shoulder and chest straps, leg straps, crotch strap, lap belt, and toe guards. The helmet guard is adjustable and may be rotated from the restraining position. The shoulder straps may also be adjusted to restrain or release the astronaut by a harness reel control handle 
located on the upper left side of the support couch. The leg straps and toe guards firmly restrain the astronaut's legs and feet. The astronaut's hands and arms are restrained by gripping the abort and flight control handles, located near the ends of the support couch armrests. 111. Instrument Panels. See figures 1-8 and 1-9. The capsule instruments are located on a main instrument panel, a left-hand console, and a right-hand console. The main instrument panel is located directly in front of the astronaut support couch, as viewed by the astronaut, and is attached to the periscope housing. The main panel is designed so that the periscope display scope forms the lower control section of the instrument panel. Navigational instruments are located in the left and center sections of the main panel. Environmental system indicators and controls are located in the right upper section of the main panel. Electrical switches and indicators and communication system controls are located in the lower right section of the main panel. The left-hand console is located on the left side of the main panel and is arranged to provide accessibility and visibility to the pilot when in the fully restrained position. The console includes a telelight sequence and warning panel, and indicators and controls for the capsule automatic stabilization control system, environmental control, and landing system. The right-hand console, located below the capsule entrance hatch, includes controls for the environmental control system. 112. Navigational Aids Refer to Section 13, Navigational Aids and Instruments. 113. Controls Capsule controls are located forward of each armrest of the support couch. An emergency escape handle is located forward of the support couch left armrest. The escape handle is utilized to initiate the abort sequence. To prevent inadvertent actuation of the escape system, the escape handle is provided with a manual lock. The manual control handle, located forward of the support couch right armrest, is utilized to control flight attitude of the capsule in the event the automatic control system failed. This handle is also normally locked. 114. Food, Water, and Waste Storage All manned capsules will be provided with food and water sufficient for the particular mission. The food will provide approximately 3,000 calories. The six-pound water supply is contained in two flat bottles, each fitted with an extendable tube. For missions longer than 28 hours, an additional water supply of approximately six pounds can be obtained from the suit circuit water separator of the environmental control system. A container for liquid waste is located near the entrance hatch. 115. Survival Equipment The survival kit, stowed at the left side of the couch, contains the following. PK, 2 raft. Desalting kit, for 8 pints. Shark repellent packages, 3 dye markers, first aid kit, 3 distress signals, signal mirror, ANPRC32 radio. Survival ration, matches, whistle, nylon cord, 10 feet. The astronaut also has a knife and flashlight attached to the pressure suit. 116. Cameras. One 16 millimeter camera is located in the lower left panel for viewing the astronaut's head and shoulders. A second 16 millimeter camera is positioned to record instrument panel readings. These cameras operate continuously during launch and orbit and at regular intervals during orbit. 117. Booster Description The launch vehicle, or booster, used to project the Project Mercury capsule into orbit is the Atlas D missile, although a number of ballistic flights will be made utilizing the Redstone missile. Capsule adapters replace the nose cones of the missiles. The capsule base is then attached to the adapter with a segmented clamp ring. 
At the proper time, explosive bolts in the clamp ring are fired, releasing the capsule. The adapter remains with the booster. 118. Capsule Recovery A normal mission is intended to terminate with the capsule landing in a predetermined area of the ocean. Under normal circumstances, ships and helicopters will be standing by with provisions to pick up the buoyant capsule immediately after landing. Considering the possibility that the capsule could land in other than the intended area, numerous devices, both electronic and visual, are automatically energized or deployed at the time of landing to aid in locating the capsule. Depending upon weather, possible capsule damage, etc., or take to the life raft, which is provided as part of the survival equipment. 119. Crew. 120. Requirements. The capsule crew consists of a one man representing the peak of physical and mental acuity, training, and mission indoctrination. Much more will be required of the crewman than is normally required of the modern aircraft test pilot. The crewman must not only observe, control, and comment upon the capsule system, but must scientifically observe and comment upon his own reaction while in a new, strange environment. 121. Selection. From the large number of men who volunteered for Project Mercury, a relatively small group has been selected. Each man in the group has undergone extensive testing and examination, which has proven conclusively that he possesses the intelligence, stamina, and mental stability required for a project of this type. 122. Training. An extensive training program is being conducted for the astronauts and other designated personnel associated with Project Mercury. The program will provide detailed descriptions and operation of all capsule components in such a manner that the trainee will fully understand the function of each component and the reasons for selecting a particular design. Supplementary briefings will be held so that the current design decisions can be made known. Initial training will be of the group discussion type, progressing to procedural trainers. Training aids and equipment will be designed to train the astronauts to achieve the highest attainable degree of proficiency in all normal and emergency procedures. The following objectives will be sought. 1. The astronaut will be indoctrinated in the general purpose and plans of the space program. 2. He must be completely familiar with all normal and emergency procedures. Emphasis will be placed on this point so that normal procedures are performed almost automatically. 3. He must be indoctrinated as far as possible in the environmental and physiological aspects of the mission. 4. Since the astronaut himself has the highest utility value and is the most flexible component in the capsule, he must be able to handle the normal workload in the capsule and still function as an efficient scientific observer. The completion of an adequate training program will assure a far higher level of reliability with respect to crew function and, of course, increase the probability of a successful mission. 123. Physiological Preparation to minimize the possibility of the astronaut having to pass body waste solids for the duration of a mission, strict dietary control will be maintained for a considerable period prior to flight. This will allow a nutritional and physical buildup in anticipation of the stringent demands which will be placed upon the astronaut's physical and mental facilities, and at the same time, control the type of solid waste which will remain in the digestive and elimination systems. Finally, only non-residue type food will be supplied for the astronaut's consumption during flight. 124. Aeromedical Instrumentation It is extremely important that certain biophysical functions be measured and recorded during all phases of the mission. Such measurements will assist in monitoring the astronaut's mental acuity and physical fitness, and will contribute significantly to aeronautical research. Indications of EKG, respiratory rate and volume, and body temperature pickups are attached to the astronaut's body. Leads are routed from the astronaut's body to terminals which extend through the suit. 
capsule wiring will attach to the suit at these points. The instrumentation will be accomplished in laboratory facilities at the launching site prior to donning the pressure suit. The data thus derived is fed intermittently to the capsule tape recorder and continuously to the telemetry equipment. 125. Astronaut's Apparel The astronaut's apparel will consist of a completely enveloping pressurized suit with helmet and suitable undergarments and boots. The helmet faceplate can be opened while the capsule interior is pressurized, although a normal procedure will be to keep the faceplate closed. Each astronaut is specially fitted and trained in the use of his suit. Air, regulated as to temperature, pressure, and humidity, is supplied to the suit for breathing and ventilation. For astronaut comfort, ventilating air should be supplied to the suit at all times. 126. Test Configuration Number 2 Capsule 127. General Capsule Number 2 is similar to the specification capsule except in the following general areas. Structural differences are enumerated in Section 2. 128. Mission Description Capsule Number 2 is an unmanned capsule and therefore the objectives to be achieved by this capsule differ from those of the specification capsule. The objectives of capsule number two are as follows. A. To qualify capsule booster combination during boost phase of flight designed to give maximum deceleration load factor during re-entry and a period of weightlessness of approximately five minutes. B. Qualify capsule during re-entry at maximum deceleration load factor of 11 G. C. Qualify retro rocket after short period of weightless flight in environment of space. D. Qualify in part operation of the parachute system, attitude control system, horizon scanner, and other major components. E. Qualify Recovery System F. Obtain experience in launch, tracking, and recovery phase of operation 129. Cabin 130. Cabin Arrangement The cabin arrangement of capsule number 2 is the same as the specification capsule except that some items, unnecessary to unmanned flight, have not been installed. Cabin equipment basically consists of a crewman simulator, instrument and display panels, navigational aids, flight and abort control handles, cameras, and electronic equipment required to operate communications equipment. 131. Support Couch There is no support couch utilized in capsule number 2 since this is an unmanned vehicle. In place of the support couch, an instrument package and a crewman simulator is installed. See figure 1-6. The crewman simulator is a box-like structure containing a carbon dioxide tank, water tank, strip heaters, solenoid valves, and controls. This device simulates the carbon dioxide output, perspiration output, and oxygen consumption of a human being. The simulator is calibrated prior to capsule flight and is activated automatically when the capsule special instrumentation package is energized. 132. Instrument Panels The instrument panels on capsule number 2 are in the same location as those in the specification capsule. However, the location and types of some of the instruments and controls mounted in these panels are different. See figures 110 and 111 for instrument panel configuration for capsule number 2. 133. Food, water, and waste storage. Since capsule number 2 is an unmanned vehicle, the food, water, and waste storage containers will not be installed. 134. Cameras. The camera configuration of capsule number 2 differs from the specification capsule in that capsule number 2 does not contain a pilot observer camera to photograph the astronaut's head and shoulders. However, 
a 70mm camera is installed which will photograph a portion of the earth and sky through a window in the lower right hand portion of the cabin. Photos will be taken at regular intervals during launch and re-entry, and at less frequent intervals during orbit. 135. Test configuration number 3 capsule. 136. General. Capsule number 3 is similar to the specification capsule except in the following general areas. Refer to section 2 for structural differences. 137. Mission description. The flight of capsule number three will qualify the capsule and escape system at a combination of dynamic pressure, Mach number, altitude, and flight path angle that represent the most severe conditions anticipated for an escape maneuver to be considered during an orbital launch. It will also qualify in part the landing and recovery system. This capsule will also be used to determine the physiological effects of acceleration on a medium-sized primate chimpanzee. The primate has been trained to respond to a particular stimulus which will be provided during the flight. His ability to respond during unusual conditions will assist in predicting, to a degree, what man's ability will be under similar conditions. Respiration, heartbeat, and other physiological functions of the primate will also be monitored during the flight. 138. Cabin. 139. Cabin Arrangement The cabin arrangement of capsule number 3 is the same as capsule number 2, except that another camera has been installed. Refer paragraph 143. And a primate support couch replaces the crewman simulator. 140. Support Couch The primate support couch utilized in capsule number 3, see figure 1-6, is designed to contain, sustain, and support a medium-sized primate, chimpanzee, during an unmanned capsule mission. The couch contains an instrument panel and controls to test the primate's reaction during capsule flight. This unit is essentially a two-section container. The aft section is the actual couch that supports and restrains the primate. The forward section contains the instrument panel, controls, and observation window. The primate couch, including occupant, is installed just prior to capsule launch. 141. Instrument Panels The instrument panels in capsule number 3 are the same as those in capsule number 2. 142. Food, Water, and Waste Storage same as capsule number two. 143. Cameras. Capsule number three contains the same camera setup as found in capsule number two, except that the pilot observer camera, not installed in number two, is installed in this capsule to photograph the primate during flight. 144. Test configuration number four capsule. 145. General. Capsule number four differs from the specification capsule in that this capsule is a ground test vehicle only. The general objectives to be achieved with number four are as follows. 146. Mission Description The following tests will be performed in this capsule to determine structural dynamic characteristics. A. Vibration Response B. 150% Environmental Test C. Capsule noise and vibration will be checked with the capsule mounted in flight condition on the nose of a redstone booster. Checks will be made during booster operation of 20 seconds and 141 seconds. D. Following these tests, the capsule will be disassembled and inspected for structural damage. 147. Cabin. 148. Cabin arrangement. The cabin arrangement in capsule number 4 is the same as capsule number 2, except that the astronaut support couch, refer paragraphs 1 through 9, and water and waste containers are installed in this capsule. 149. Instrument panels. Same as capsule number 2. 150. Food, water, and waste storage. Capsule number 4 does not have the food storage container installed. 
water and waste containers are installed. 151. Cameras. In capsule number 4, all three cameras, pilot observer camera, earth and sky observer camera, and instrument panel observer camera, are installed. 